uh, they have CSA, which is Committee Supported Agriculture. Uh, also, Paul Romero, who I'm going to talk about in a minute, he's irrigating his peas in winter wheat, so you can have here today. And the same with Seeds Coalition, which has over 3,000 consumers and farmers that are a part of it. So this is uh, Juan Esteban Arellano, journalist farmer, and then to the Chile Advertising Act. History records that the first chili seeds were brought to New Mexico by Obregón in 1580, then by Don Juan de Oñate in 1598. Ever since, chili has been grown by hundreds of small chili farmers in northern New Mexico. It's only recently that chili has been grown as a commercial crop in New Mexico, mostly in the southern part of the state in the Mesilla Valley. Chili is New Mexico's unique signature crop, what defines the state and what makes our cuisine so unique. But if the proposed Chile Advertising Act is passed, as amended, our 400 years of history will be wiped out. Our history of growing our unique chili in northern New Mexico will be erased. What makes our cuisine and chili different is that every community has developed its own rare qualities, very different in taste, texture, than the commercial variety grown in Hatch. Those of us who, who know chili can tell the difference between Chimayo and Budo or Velar de Chile descendants of the original chili that was grown here for over 400 centuries from that developed by NMSU. I have no problem if the big commercial growers and more so the processors are required to follow the Chile Advertising Act. But why should I give NMDA and NMSU access to my small, small farm where I grow chili for home consumption and at times sell a few bushels at the farmer's market? This will add to bureaucracy and needless paperwork and government intrusion into our farms. From reading the bill, what NMDA wants to know is everyone who is growing chili where it is grown, so that when NMSU finally introduces its GE chili, genetic engineer chili, they'll know what farmers are growing. Every year during the annual get-together of the New Mexico legislature, there are hundreds of bills introduced. At the end, only a few become law because as concerned citizens, we have to track those that might be harmful or those we support. One of those we have been tracking is SB 234, Chili Advertising Act Violations, introduced by Representative George Munoz from Gallup. A similar bill, House Bill 238, was introduced in the lower chamber by Representative Rodolfo Martinez from Bayard. The proposed bill is an amendment to the New Mexico Chile, Chile Advertising Act, expanding the violation of the New Mexico Chile Advertising Act. The bill is not necessary and is being enforced on all chili growers, commercial and hobby farmers, and small and traditional farmers by the New Mexico Chile Association for control all over, over all chili in the state. Please keep your hands and inspectors away from our Huertas de Chile. It's the processors who have to comply with the law not the small farmer, regardless of where he is farming. The bill is in support of the New Mexico. The bill in. The bill is in support of the Mexico Chile Association and a headache for the small chili grower. We want to identify our chili as grown in embudo, chimayo, española, etc., not simply as generic New Mexico chili. I urge you to kill this bill, which is bad for the small grower. Yours truly, Juan Esteban Arellano, embudo, New Mexico. Now, what I, the handouts that I have is just, it just, it seems like it's a lot, but it's not. What I want you to show you is basically, this is the Chile Association. It's off the, off the Chile Association website. This is a bill that was created by the Chile Association. In 2011, it was introduced, and all of us farmers, we thought, we said, this is a really bad bill. Because it said that the rules would be, would be promulgated by the New Mexico Chile industry. And we kept saying, that does not include the small farmers. And they kept saying, yes, it does, yes, it does, yes, it does. Well, it didn't, and the, and the rules got promulgated. And that's what, that's what no one's looking at right now, and we'll go, go over that in a minute. The Chile Association is really very small. I mean, the membership is like, what, 80 people. Half of those are probably the ones that are farmers. 31% of this is red oleo resin. That's owned by Lou Bayet. That, that's, that, that, that's the stuff like the, the when, you eat, when you eat Doritos, Frito, Frito chips, all of that, the food coloring, all that comes from that. It's not New Mexico Chile, it's paprika. Then you have the cayenne mash, which is owned by the Cervantes. And, you know, Dino Cervantes said at a meeting in October, a biotech meeting with us as an MDA, that, you know, they grow the majority in Mexico and 1,200 here in New Mexico. Now, first of all, there's nothing wrong with growing chili in Mexico or other countries. We do not have the land or the water to grow all the chili in this country, in, this, in New Mexico, if we want to do all these, all these processors. There's nothing wrong with that. But then you have, like, the fresh process, which is the Buena Food, Cervantes, some other private label people that do that, and the fresh green, which is only 5%. Most of the chili that the Chili Association has is exported. It is not sold in the state. Then you have us, which are all the other small people, small farmers, traditional farmers, the Pueblos, all of us. A lot of those chili, especially in the Pueblos, it is not even sold. It is against the, the religion to be sold. It's consumed on the Pueblos, it's, and it's consumed in the communities. People barter it, people exchange, we give it to each other. 
now more people are starting to sell at farmers markets, and the farmers markets, you know, they already have regulations in place where you cannot sell anything at farmers market unless it's sold unless it's grown in New Mexico. So this would be like double regulation on top of the farmers markets. So I mean, this is, this is redundant. The other thing that's happened, and I think this is probably what's a big association is that our farmers make anywhere from two to four dollars and up for, far, for a pound of chili. The industry farmers have told us they only make 50 to 75 cents a pound. So of course, I mean, if I'm it, I would rather grow for myself or go grow another crop that I can make more money at. And finally, the other thing is, you know, we don't have problems with, with, with disease in our farms. And the thing is, you know, because our farmers are smaller and they also have, you know, a lot of more crop rotation, and our seeds, because they've been planted every year for over 500 years, continuously, Continuously, continuously. They are native to the area, they're drought resistant, they're pesticide re resistant, they're tofu resistant, which is something that this association keeps having problems with. So you need to look at the rules. There's these rules that, I, that, I, that I've handed out here. So when they pass the Chile Advertising Act, these were the rules that they were created. So first of all, it's, it's, they kept saying it's a voluntary program. It's not voluntary. It's only voluntary if we forgo calling our chilies by a geographic area in New Mexico. So if I'm growing, you know, embudo chile, I can no longer call my chile embudo unless I sign up with the Department of Ag. So what this, this bill really serves at is it's, it's data mining. It's like creating a database of every single person in New Mexico that grows chile. Now, in this, under the rules, it says that they're defining New Mexico chile as any capsicum nana. So that means it means any type of chili, whether it's, you know, a New Mexico variety, where it's pimento, it's paprika, cayenne, pasilla, guajillo, uh, any Italian variety, any chili grown in New Mexico is considered New Mexico chili. So when you buy a container that says New Mexico chili, it doesn't necessarily have the New Mexico chili you're thinking about, it can have other things, because it, you know, can be mixed with something else. And the other thing that this does is that this, this, the rules as they exist now, they allow for contamination. They allow for 5% of non-New Mexico chili to be mixed in with New Mexico chili, and these still call it New Mexico chili. So if you buy this little container here, green chili, and it says New Mexico, 5% of it can be from Mexico, or it can be chili extract. Our farmers, our processors of the Taos County Incubator, none of these people mix anything with their chilies, and that's what we're known for. We're known for purity. And, we, and this would actually denigrate the quality of our product if we have to go under these rules. And the other thing is that, you know, they're saying here that you have to register, and we've gone through this in many other committees, that it says submission of a verification form required for fresh chili. A verification form must be submitted with each load and followed through the point of sale. So if a person has to go to a farmer's market and they sell, they would have to have a verification form to each consumer, which is ridiculous. The other thing is that then we also have to go on a public website. And, you know... In 2009, Monsanto asked to meet with me because we've been fighting against this genetic engineer chili. And I said, okay, tell us where you're planting your genetic engineer crops. And if you tell us that, we can at least try to take some precautions so that we don't, you know, get sued, right? Oh, they won't tell us. But now, NMSU and NBA want us to tell you, it's chili association, want us, to, want us to tell you where all our chili is planted. So now if you look at the, the bill, it's at page 2, sec, uh, section 2, it says... No, that it is unlawful for a person to knowingly advertise, describe, label, or offer for sale. So it's just saying describe. It's not saying that if, that if I'm labeling it, if I'm selling it, I'm describing it. It says describe or offer for sale. So there are no rules for this new bill right here with the expansion. I mean, if I am planting Santa Fe Grande Chile here, it's a Santa Fe Zavari Casa de Grande. If I plant it and I want to go sell it, I can't sell it unless I register with them because I cannot call it something bigger than it. So now you have that guy Hatch, the, the, the trademark there that Hatch Chili there. Okay. So he could create a product, Hatch, label, and he says Santa Fe Grande Chili's in it. And then, he would, and then if he sold it in New Mexico, he would have to create a new label. So he would have to create a label saying, not grown in New Mexico, right? But, you know, that's the same thing like that labeling law, that GE labeling law. People were, opponents were saying, oh, well, then everyone has to create a new, a new label if they sell it in other states. Well, the same thing would happen with this. In a way, it kind of, it kind of prevents competition because anyone from out of state that wants to, wants to sell in New Mexico would have to follow a different rule than what's allowed under FDA. So, for example, the bag that Gene Baca has right there, that's perfectly legal anywhere else in the United States. Because under FDA, New Mexico, you see, New Mexico is a cultivar. 
So they put New Mexico on there, and they put on there, made in Mexico. They didn't say it was made in Mexico, they said it's made in Mexico. Perfectly legal. And that's exactly how you have to do it when you do it in other states with threat under FDA, you know? So here, they're changing, they're changing the rules, you know? They're changing the rules for people here in New Mexico. There is no reason for this bill. If the Chile Association and Jean Baca told me the other day that they're creating their own New Mexico Chile certification program. But you know, we are too, and NMSU knows about this. So what the Chile Association can do is that they can put a logo. I mean, we already, we already have a mental taste of traditions program, grow with tradition program. It's a label that already go that we've had since 2000. So if they wanted to, to do something special and they're really worried about competition, I mean, we don't have products competition, then they can create their own certification that goes on their members' products, and that would resolve the problem. There's no reason for them to be doing and posting this on every single growing in Mexico. It's, I mean, we should not have industry dictating, you know, what other other farmers in, in, in New Mexico can be doing. So we urge you to to not to not to not support this this bill. And I really think that you know, for other farmers, other companies, I mean, it's just really anti-business. And for us, it is making us relinquish our regional identity. The fact that I cannot call an isleta chili isleta because it, because if that's the variety, that's the name of the variety. Even if I plant in the South Valley or the North Valley, it's still an isleta chili. That's a culture. That's what it, what it is. And now I can no longer call it that. It's ridiculous. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes.